Okay, we're going to be dealing today with a topic called fusion. Now, fusion is something that students normally find really, really confusing, and I know exactly why. It's because fusion is a very, very small part of the specification, and as a result, your teacher is going to gloss over it very quickly because they're like, it doesn't really matter, it's not worth as many marks as everything else. Fusion is very different to the majority of chemistry that you're going to be dealing with, and therefore your brain can get a bit confused if you don't deal with it in a detail. So that's what we're going to do now. So the important thing we need to specify with fusion is what is going on in an atom and in a chemical reaction so we can see how fusion is different. So let's have a look at an atom. Now one thing, you know you've got the nucleus and you've got the electrons around the outside, like this. And if we have what's called a chemical reaction, these are the majority of reactions that you come across in chemistry, what is happening is that we have two atoms coming into contact with one another and they're going to share their electrons like this in some covalency and so we join our electrons together. So what you find is that a chemical reaction, which is not fusion, a chemical reaction involves electrons. Oh my, this pen is so difficult to write with, I'm so sorry. This, this looks like boobs. Um, it involves electrons, okay? A chemical reaction involves electrons. And the reason that this happens is that my electrons and my nucleus are very far apart. If your nucleus was the size of a golf ball, okay, that's my nucleus as a golf ball, the electrons would be 300 meters away, okay? That is an insanely large distance. So when I'm bumping my chemicals into another with collision theory in my, for example, let's say a molecule of methane and a molecule of oxygen are floating around and bumping into each other, it is only the electrons that are ever going to come into contact with each other because the nucleus is so far away from that electronic radius that it's never going to come into contact with the other molecules nucleus. So only the electrons are ever going to bump into each other so therefore, only my electrons are going to react. So all chemical reactions are exclusively between the electrons in my atoms' shells. They are never with the nucleus. This is a chemical reaction. So just make sure you make a note about that. Chemical is electrons. Fusion is an atomic reaction. I've heard things like the atomic bomb. This means that we are applying so much heat and pressure that we manage to squeeze our atoms together so hard that the nuclei touch. And remember, like I said, if those nuclei were the size of a golf ball, the electrons would be 300 meters away. So to get these two things to touch, we need to do 600 meters of extra squishing. That's a very unscientific way of putting that because you're going to have a bunch of repulsion and stuff as well. But just imagine it is very difficult to get nuclei to touch, and therefore it is very difficult to get an atomic nuclei reaction. Very easy to get the electrons to touch, comparatively. Very difficult to get the nuclei to touch. So these conditions of heat and pressure are only really present in stars. We can make them on Earth, but, you know, let's just to keep things nice and simple. This heat and pressure is in stars. So that is where we get fusion. Okay, makes sense. Right, let's go through how we detail fusion. When we're detailing fusion, you will write your elements, as you normally would, with the elemental symbol. So we're going to do a basic fusion here of hydrogen. Now, this little diagram here is going to need some numbers that you wouldn't usually bother including if you were doing a chemical reaction. But for an atomic reaction, we need to know about the number of neutrons and protons in my elements, in my atoms, so that I know what is going to happen. So on the bottom, we're going to put my proton number, which for hydrogen is 1. And on the top, we're going to put our mass number, which this might be a bit confusing, but I'm just going to put these two things here, 1 and 2. Okay. So if you're trying to remember, the big number goes on the top. Big is better. Big is higher. So big is higher up. Big, higher. 
big number higher goes on the top. Okay, you need to remember that. If you get these numbers the wrong way around, you will be deducted because the bottom is proton and the top is your mass. Now, hopefully, if you are on any of the exam boards, your periodic table that you're given will have your proton number on the bottom and your mass number on the top. So you can just look at the periodic table to remember this. That is not true if you are on the OCR chemistry uh, specification. For some reason, their periodic table has the numbers the other way around. I don't know why. So for you guys, that's like an extra step to remember that you have to flip from the periodic table. I'm sorry about that. Every other example is more sensible. Okay, let's get back to these two things. We've got two different hydrogen atoms here. We know that these are called isotopes. Okay, you watch my video on that if you haven't. Isotopes just means they have different masses. So I'm going to draw a picture of the nucleus of these things down here. So this hydrogen here has one proton, a mass of one. That one comes from that one proton. So this is this hydrogen, one proton. This hydrogen over here has one proton, but it has a mass of two. So therefore, my other mass unit must be coming from a neutron. So if I'm going to fuse these two elements together, I'm going to squish their nuclei together. I'm going to combine the atoms to make a bigger atom. So before I work out the identity of my element, I'm just going to do that picture model down the bottom and squish that together. So if I squish this together, I'm going to have two protons and one neutron. So now I can fill in my numbers. Two protons, so my atomic number is two, and then three little fundamental particles in my nucleus means that I have a mass of three. Looking at the periodic table, any element with two protons is helium. So this is an isotope of helium with a mass of three. So this is the fusion process that's happening here. It is an atomic reaction, not a chemical reaction, occurring between two different atoms. I'm squishing them together under a lot of heat and pressure so that we can ignore the electrons on the outside, squish those radii together to get an atomic reaction. And these atomic reactions are incredibly rare. They only happen in stars because I require that heat and pressure. And that is why they can get confusing when you're looking at chemical reactions all the time and electrons because these are very different reactions and they're not really considered chemistry. They're probably closer to physics because we're not really going to be dealing with fusion ever as a chemist. Um, but for some reason, it's in your exam board. So uh, just to finish off then, I'm going to give you some questions to get you to figure this stuff out on your own. So I want you to see what you would get if you were to fuse hydrogen 2, 1, which is called deuterium, with hydrogen 2, 1. What element are you going to get there? So pause the video, figure it out, and then press play. That's going to be helium-4-2. Now, you might get an example later on where you get something like this. Hydrogen-1-2 and hydrogen-3-1. What do they make? Now, this can be a bit confusing. It's probably going to make HE-4-2 with one spare neutron, which we just write like this. But you could also write HE52. That's another possibility. And that would be considered correct in most exam boards because they don't expect you to know fusion very well. Um, but this is just because you might see it in textbooks, something like a little N, and be wondering what that is. It's a spare neutron that's just come out because helium 42 is the most stable isotope. So that's the one that's going to be made in real life and the neutron will be kicked out. But you're not expected to know that in most of your exam boards, so writing helium-5-2 will probably be accepted. Um, I definitely will be for AQA, and I know that it is for OCR. I'm not so sure about Edexcel or any of the other exam boards. Okay.